this controversy around the Australian War Memorial. Now, I regard the War Memorial as the soul of the country. You've heard me say that before. It commemorates the service and sacrifice of all our military personnel, but, but most particularly and importantly, the 100,000 who died wearing our country's uniform. However, a statement this week by the outgoing War Memorial Chairman, not the board, just the chairman, to expand the memorial to deal with what he says is a much broader and much deeper depiction of the so-called frontier wars between British settlers and the original inhabitants of Australia has provoked uproar. Now, to understand why, I'm joined now by John King, Deputy President of the National RSL. John, welcome to the show. Um, this is one of those issues I touched on on Monday, back in again throughout the week, where there's been a huge response from my viewers. Help them understand why the RSL doesn't support the inclusion of these so-called frontier wars. I mean, they're not actually wars. Let's call them conflicts in the Australian War Memorial. Thank you. The, um, the RSL takes the position that um, Charles Bean, the founder of the War Memorial, had a vision that, that that place would be sacrosanct to all of those who lost their lives wearing the country's uniform in winning our freedoms and continuing the freedoms we, we, we have today. Uh, that is quite separate from the colonial times, which was pre-Federation. The RSL does, in fact, acknowledge that there should be some um, placement somewhere for the uh, recognition of those incidents, but not at the Australian War Memorial. It should be in a space where it can tell that story um, for the people of Australia. Prior to Federation, uh, and that's where most of these incidents, if not all of them, occurred, what should happen is those stories and that um, information should be placed in the libraries and the museums of the state so that the people of those states can actually look at their total history. Um, so the position of the RSL is very clear. The War Memorial, as it stands, is a place for those who lost their lives, for their families to come back and reflect on those, those uh, losses and to show recognition of those people who did give up their lives for our freedoms. Look, John, you, you have said something there that I haven't really picked up at all this week, but you're absolutely right. We're not talking about Australia uh, existing prior to 1901. So when you have a war memorial in Australia's name to represent our war dead, every other conflict we're talking about between the colonial settlers and Aboriginal people was under the auspices of various state colonies. So appropriately, that's a good place for those stories to be told. But also, I think, and I think your president backs this in, uh, the new facility announced by the Morrison government, $300 million, so, so not uh, insubstantial for Aboriginal people. They say it'll be somewhere in that parliamentary triangle. Uh, there's a lot of thought that it'll be in and around Old Parliament House on those lawns there. That's the appropriate place for this story and keep the politics and everything other than wars outside of the War Memorial. Yes, absolutely. The RSL does agree to the fact that there should be a, a place that's um, sacred to our Indigenous peoples uh, for their stories from all states to be placed so that we can see the total picture of what happened prior to the Federation. Hey, now, I've spoken to a, a couple of people on the uh, board of the War Memorial. This is quite contentious with the board. I know the minister has come out today and said he backs in this idea from the memorial, but all we have to date is a statement from the outgoing chairman to pursue this idea. As I said, uh, your boss, the head of the RSL, who is on the board of the Australian War Memorial, doesn't support it. Others I've spoken to don't support it. And of course, the War Memorial Board is independent of government. What are veterans telling you? Um, from this week, we've been um, gathering a number of uh, emails that are coming into the national office, and I have no doubts that they're going into the state branch offices as well, that uh, the RSL should stand up to the government and let them know that this is not on. And even to, um, to the point where some people are saying we need to create an online petition um, so we can show the government that the majority of veterans are not in favour of this at all.
think it's a majority of Australians, John. Good luck with the fight. Um, you'll have a ready seat here on Credland to discuss it any time. Thank you for your time tonight.